Good morning, welcome to Project Sirius, where today's video diary hones in on the final preparation ahead of what we hope is a world record attempt by Fraser Corsan tomorrow morning. Weather continues to be a real concern for us. We had torrential rain yesterday, but you probably can't get a sense of it, just how low the cloud is today. We estimate it's only at about 250 feet. When we woke this morning, the buildings opposite our hotel were completely shrouded within cloud. The long range weather forecast is also a concern. We know storms are due here on Sunday. The fear is that there's going to be strong wind coming in ahead of them. And in fact, it is already looking like there's some rain around the area for Saturday afternoon. We need clear conditions to get the balloon up to 40,000 feet. Right now, Fraser and his pilot Sebastian are going through the final preparation of how Fraser's going to exit seated off of the balloon. If we get the weather, we will be going tomorrow morning throughout the course of today. We're going to bring you a number of interviews from the team looking to support Fraser's record attempt. But first, let's hear from Fraser himself. Having had the rain yesterday, um, we have extremely low cloud today. Um, our key concern with that fundamentally is that we can't launch. Uh, we need to have clear skies and low wind um, because that's going to allow us both to launch, um, get to altitude and for the team to safely land because this isn't just about me obviously flying the wingsuit, it's about the team getting back safely. So at the moment um, we are looking at 200 um, to 250 foot low cloud. Uh, the problem is the wind's already just starting to build uh, and we have a storm front which is forecast. So there is a solid three to four days of storm coming through. So unfortunately, um, the weather is playing a massive role once again, uh, and in a negative way. We've looked at all the data that came out from the plane jump, um, and we always knew that the plane jump was going to be fast, um, but not quite as fast as we thought it was. With all the hot weather we had, the plane was running in even faster than normal, so I actually exited the aircraft at 256 miles an hour, um, which obviously didn't help with uh, having a spin. The difference with the balloon is, of course, we're not flying like that, it's going straight up. Um, it'll only be moving the speed of whatever upper winds are doing. So I'll be exiting effectively at zero miles per hour. So what that means is I'm able to wear the Aurora, um, which has magnetic riser covers, which means there's no risk of them being opened up, obviously, in the 250 mile per hour wind. Um, and it's obviously designed specifically for the performance, which is great. Uh, it means that my exit is somewhat different as well, um, because instead of leaping out and basically keeping everything closed um, in, a, in a head high attitude, I'm actually going to be aiming at 45 degrees and dropping off the platform. And I mean dropping off because there is no momentum with me in terms of airflow. So I will fall for probably two, 300 feet. Um, as I spread my wings, they'll then inflate. And then by around 500 feet marker, I will be flying fully uh, and, and I'll be off. So that's the key change uh, with this. It also means that I get to sit on the platform from launch all the way up to altitude. So um, instead of being inside the nice, warm, cozy aircraft, um, I'll be sitting on the outside here with a sleeping bag over me um, to insulate me on top of my normal insulation. The role of the pilots is critical in helping Fraser get up to 42,000 feet. Earlier on, I caught up with co-pilot Mark O'Neill. My role during the flight and we're going to, is to com communication and looking after the instruments. We've got the aircraft radio and the crew chase radios. We have the, the iPads, nice and simple these days with the iPads for tracking our flights and tracks and stuff like that. Uh, altimeters, and we'll uh, be carrying our GPS as well. The other issue we have up there is the extreme cold. A lot of the instruments don't like to keep working up there in the extreme cold. So we have a battery that will be wired up to the uh, instruments as well to keep them running during the flight because it does get down to about minus 60. So my role during the flight is to make sure the instruments are all still working and in communication with the ground crew and the air traffic control. And I'll be giving the uh, controllers notification uh, when Fraser's getting ready to jump and letting Fraser know when he's clear to jump. So it's end of day two. Um, we've had a good day in terms of the actual balloon basket and making sure that we're content with um, the exit procedures off the balloon basket. Um, we've spent a lot of time looking at weather systems from about five different websites um, and from some uh, data obviously the pilots get. We were originally hoping to do an exit practice today from a lower altitude with the balloon. That's not been possible because once again, um, the weather has failed us. Um, it's down to 200 feet cloud base um, and it's just not safe to fly in that. The forecast looking forward tomorrow is now looking highly, highly unlikely. Um, and behind it are two storm systems. So where we'd hope there was a window tomorrow, it now looks like that is, it is out. We're fingers crossed that it changes, um, but at the moment the, the consistent forecasts have been pretty predictable. So it's incredibly frustrating. Um, the team have worked incredibly hard for this uh, on the ground, in the air and back at base. Um, uh, but that's where we are. The one thing we can't control is the weather. So that's the end of what's ultimately been quite a frustrating day whilst training has been 
positive and Fraser's now clear on how he will exit. There are real concerns with the weather. The team are continuing to monitor the weather patterns, but we need some real luck if we're to get the balloon up tomorrow.